SpaceX's Starship, the largest and most powerful rocket ever built, has been destroyed during its return to Earth after nearly completing its third test flight. For more on this, I'm joined by co-director of Swinburne's Space Technology and Industry Institute, Dr Rebecca Allen. Doctor, thanks so much for your time this afternoon. What can you tell us about what went wrong? And, and given that it ended in flames, was this a failed mission or can it still be considered a success of sorts? Yes, well, I think SpaceX is certainly happy with the majority of how the test went. Um, it's the furthest that the Starship has ever been able to fly. Um, with the past two tests, you know, not even really making it very far off the launch pad. However, the final stage of this test was for the Starship spacecraft and both the booster engine to deorbit um, and hopefully even try to capture that booster engine again. And that did not happen. It seems that both components have broken up up um, on re-entry. And so this is going to be a real challenge to understand exactly why the spacecraft broke up when they were hoping that it wouldn't. And considering that it will in the future carry human passengers, this is a really critical thing that they have to be able to, to understand. And what was the main aim of this mission? And is it going to set SpaceX back at all? So the main aim of this engine, I mean, this engine, sorry, this mission um, was really to understand, you know, after the two tests that they had previously, um, where the rocket did disassemble kind of shortly after launch, could they make it into orbit? And once they were in orbit, could the spacecraft actually undertake key activities? And it was able to do that. So one of the major successes here is that the spacecraft actually was able to separate from the booster. So that's the first real critical step. And then once in orbit, the spaceship was able to perform some key things you know, that would be necessary for these next stages of its mission. And really all that it had left to do was actually re-enter the Earth's atmosphere atmosphere and deorbit in what's called a hard splashdown. So in the future, they're hoping that this ma magnificently large uh, spacecraft will actually be able to go from a horizontal position vertical, like we've seen with SpaceX's uh, previous uh, booster rockets and be able to land itself. It's not quite there yet, though. No, there's still a bit, uh, a bit to go. So what is the process yeah. now? Will SpaceX go away, look at improvements and then start planning for the next test? Yes. Yeah, so what is magnificent here is that SpaceX actually already have a number of the starships built. So even though these spacecraft cost in tens of millions of dollars for each one, um, they were able to really turn around. The last test was in November. So in a matter of months, they were able to turn around and do this next test and see a lot more progress. And so I'm fairly confident here that you know they will be able to test again. They will be able to try to understand what happened with re-entry. The, I think the main holdup might actually come because the super heavy booster um, also broke up and that was something that really wasn't supposed to happen. So I think there's going to be a bit of an investigation because really whenever you have something to the scale um, of that go kind of go awry, then you have to really understand from the regulatory bodies, would that pose a threat if it happened again? So we, they got pretty lucky this time. Um, so hopefully they'll be able to really identify those issues and then rapidly be able to test again um, because there's so many important missions which are dependent on the spacecraft. Yeah, absolutely. But as you mentioned, it does cost quite a bit. Um, you mentioned yeah. there, just how much does each of these tests cost? So anywhere from, I think the estimates are probably around $50 million um, just for one of the, the spaceships. Um, and so that, that doesn't include all of the fuel, you know, all of the services to launch it. So really, you know, this is, this is not a cheap test. Um, and again, this whole system is meant to be reusable. So the fact that it doesn't land, that it does break apart, um, that's that's probably one of the most costly um, elements of this is that you're not recovering any of this technology. Yeah. And do we know uh, roughly how many test flights SpaceX would likely mm. do before it does eventually send astronauts? Yeah, look, I think we're going to have to start seeing a lot more progress in terms of successful orbits and re-entries um, because the idea that you're flying, you know, crewed passenger, you're doing crews, um, 
you know, NASA won't risk human life until they're really assured. So I'd say, you know, I think uh, SpaceX has three to four starships that are already assembled. I'd say we are looking at at least that many tests, um, if not a few more on top of that. Um, but hopefully everything will go to plan because uh, NASA is depending on the starship to be able to land humans on the moon again, um, hopefully within the next few years.